Sometimes you just need to dump the live stream. Hopefully this live stream performs much better. I apologize to all of you that were on the first one. It was bad for you, it was bad for me. All kinds of nonsense, but we do these live. So let's try again. All right, we are going to talk about Fed Week. We're gonna talk about some data from Resi Club. We're gonna talk about wages and strikes and invitation homes and all kinds of things, economy and real estate. Thank you for being here, I appreciate you. We try to do these things at 7.30 a.m. live. Sometimes technology fails us and we have to restart at 7.36. It happens. So, Fed Week, let's get into Fed Week. Fed Week this week I think is going to be kind of a big fat nothing burger. Current odds of a Fed rate increase are 99 point, or I'm sorry, a Fed pause, 99.3%. In fact, the chances of a Fed rate hike in December are now down under 25%. So again, uh, not a lot of folks think we're done. In fact, according to Nikki Leaks, Nikki Leaks, of course, termed by Meet Kevin uh, for someone to follow on Twitter. He is saying that as of right now, there are one, two, three, four, four uh, sell side firms or analysts that think there will be one more Fed rate hike. It is PIMCO. L.H. Meyer, Bank of America, and Barclay. Those are the only four. Every other analyst thinks the Fed is on pause. We are at terminal rate. We are doing all of those things. So again, thank you for tuning into this repeat of the daily financial news. I had to dump the first one. It was bad for me, bad for you. So thank you for uh, tuning in. So the Fed week is a big nothing burger, but the Fed, uh, Jerome Powell at the microphone. My suspicion is he is going to continue to be the big bad wolf. I had hoped that he was sitting down, but I don't think that's the case. I think he generally feels that if he stops talking tough, that asset prices will run, you know, rates will come down, housing will take off again. I think he's generally afraid of a reacceleration. So I think he's gonna to talk tough. I think he's gonna to try to do his best to keep the rates where they are at. But again, I think the Fed is done. The question on Wednesday will be, how hawkish is Jerome Powell? Does he say things like, we may have reached terminal rate? Or will he say something like, <coughs> my current impression is we will have one more rate hike sometime in the next two or three meetings? That's kind of where I think Powell comes in either, hey, we could be there, possibly, or you know what? I still think we might need one more. It may come in the next two to three meetings. I think that's where Jerome Powell will be, but we will have to pay attention. Why is that important? I don't think we can see margin compression between mortgage rates and the 10-year until banks think the Fed is done. As long as Jerome Powell is the big bad wolf threatening one more hike, I think banks keep the spread at or above 300 basis points. Again, where historically it's about 180 basis points. So that is something all of us will be watching on Wednesday, November 1st. So Fed Day. Again, only four firms see one more rate hike. It is PIMCO, LH Meyer, Bank of America, and Barclay. Uh, let's talk about some data from Resi Club Pro. Folks, if you haven't tuned into Lance Lambert and his brand new media company, uh, you are truly missing out. As a part of Resi Club Pro, uh, these are some of the data that I gathered and I, I can't thank him enough. He's sort of a one-stop shop for all things housing, housing, housing. He got to interview the CEO of Amherst, Sean Dobson. Uh, basically, Sean Dobson made his bones betting against housing in 2008. He flipped that over to bet on housing a la Warren Buffett. If I could buy every home in America, I would. Sean Thompson and Amherst now have 44,000 single family homes. 44,000 single family homes. They are focused on real assets, AKA the US single family home. It talks about what do they buy? We buy homes one at a time. You know, as the author of One Rental at a Time, that kind of feels near and dear to my heart. Again, what is Amherst doing? They are going out and selecting markets with analytics. They are looking for opportunities. They are looking for yield. This is what Amherst does. They are looking to buy at six caps, sell at four caps. It's something else we got from the article. 
But there's nothing that Amherst is doing that you can't do. Amherst is a big company with lots of people, a lot of overhead, scanning the market all the time. You have a competitive advantage. You could look at your buy box every day. Get super focused, look at the buy box, and you could outwin or outbeat these big firms. But you gotta do the work, right? What we talk about all the time. Get a buy box, look at it every day, document changes, understand average, look for great. It doesn't change. You can do this too. Believe in yourself. Please believe in yourself. Um, something else that Sean Dobson, again, CEO of Amherst, was saying as a part of Resi Club Pro, uh, listing volume. He thinks listing volume is going to drift lower. With rates where they are, it really is causing the lock-in. And this is, this is so important. This is what all of the negative and crash bros have wrong. They are all looking at wages and home price. How many times have you seen the pretty chart that says, hey, homes have to crash because they are three, four, five, six, eight X the average income. The chart's pretty, it's beautiful, but it also means nothing in the current environment. What we need to realize is the housing market is broken. And Sean Dobson put his thumb or finger or whatever on the key metric that you should watch. It is called housing turnover. This is how fast or how frequent housing turns over. For the last 40 years, housing turnover has been around 7%. About one out of every 11 or 12 homes sells every year, about. What is happening right now, according to Sean Dompson, is he thinks that's gonna be cut in half, and I agree. I actually think the average tenure in a home, which was eight years, is going to go to 12 or 13. Housing turnover is cut in half. And that means less sales, less transactions, and yes, stable prices. You can't have a price crash if the turnover collapses. It just doesn't work that way. That's not how Economics 101 works. You're focused on the wrong metrics. I know this housing market is different than the GFC. And I know it breaks your brain. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's, it, you know, it's mo far more like 1981, 82, and 83, where turnover collapsed. Uh, what else did we get? Again, um, the point of all of this is the Fed broke the housing market. I'm looking at days on market to write my aggressive offers. Uh, Amherst CEO says turnover is getting cut in half, which will bring inventory down. And of course, remember, don't please don't forget this. Home builders are reducing new developments. They are, they're slowing down. So if, we, if Sean is right, and if I am right about builders, where are we going to be in March and April? That's, that's frightening to me to think about. But we've got the next three or four months to get through, so lots could change before then. So again, Resi Club, you can get a free, if you're not getting the free Resi Club, I don't know what you're doing. Resi Club Analytics, put in your email. Once a day, you get an uh, article. If you really want to know about the economy and housing, Resi Club Pro is your thing. Again, you get these special interviews and whatnot. It's pretty amazing. Strikes. Looks like UAW has a tentative agreement with all three, four GM and Santillas or whatever that other one is, former Chrysler. Uh, again, we'll, we'll see. I don't know that they've been voted on or ratified yet, but it does appear that the UAW strikes are, let's call it over. Let's put good karma out there. So we will see where we go from there. Um, invitation Homes. Again, another large owner of single family homes. I got a chance to peek into their earnings uh, the other day. And uh, first and foremost, the CEO says the lack of supply in the market is very, very real. And he's saying this both as a buyer, seller, and landlord. Rent growth in Q3. Drum roll, please. 6.2%. How many times have we seen folks say that rents are falling? Folks, as I keep trying to highlight, rents are soft in multifamily. Big multifamily. 
With the amount of inventory coming online in Class A in some cities, you are going to see rental softness. However, if you are a landlord of single family homes, you have the asset of choice. And oh, by the way, let's not forget that with high prices and high interest rate, less people can buy. That does not stop the desire for single family homes. Single family home rentals are going to be in better demand. Nobody can buy, so they will rent. Average income, this blew, this blew me away. Blew me away, just, I couldn't believe it. The average family income of an invitation homes resident, $142,000. Think about that, 142 k and you're renting. Why is that? Because high home prices, high interest rates. You want a single family home, so you rent from invitation homes. Average stay in an invitation homes is 36 months. I would actually say that's pretty short. My average, my average tenure for a home is far closer to eight years, uh, but invitation homes at 36. Occupancy, 96.9, let's call it 97%. Also, they are forecasting a property tax increase of 10.5%. So again, they are forecasting that and again, but we had rent growth of 6%. At the end of the day, Invitation Homes is a net seller. Invitation Homes was a net seller of 10 homes if you back out the one-time acquisition from Starwood and good old billionaire Barry who is cash strapped. They sold 397, they bought 387. So they're still a buyer and a seller, but according to the Crash Bros, they are going to crash the market because they are net sellers. Folks, these folks don't know basic math. I don't know how to help them. Uh, then next up, what else do we got? Wages. They've got a company called WTW. Consulting firm WTW has gone out and serviced mid and small companies. They are budgeting a 4% salary growth for 2024. Just by comparison, the same uh, forecast was 4.6% in 2023. So we are seeing a little bit of less wage growth. And we do have some earnings that came out. Uh, McDonald's looks like they beat top line, beat bottom line. Uh, same Global, same store sales up about 8.8%. Earnings up 18% year on year. Look like SoFi beat expectations as well. Uh, so we have a lot going on. But let's congratulate two people. Let's congratulate Aaron. <coughs> Excuse me. Aaron, congratulations uh, for getting your next deal. Uh, your card will go out in the mail. And Tim, Tim, congratulations for getting your golden ticket. Uh, your card will be going out in the mail. Both of these should have been mailed from Vegas, but I didn't have a stamp. So I brought them to Mountain View. Uh, Tim, Aaron, congratulations. Your cards will be going out in the mail. And then finally, what does this 94 mean? We have 94 tickets left to the uh, party in Vegas on February 17th and 18th. This is an event we are putting on to recognize all of the subscribers in the five-year journey. But remember, I'm trying to exceed your expectations. We have 94 tickets left at 199 bucks where you're gonna get to interact with 12, 13, 14 millionaires. You're gonna get to interact with 250 plus amazing folks who are doing the work. You should look to get three, four, five new friends at that event. You will not only have the chance to ask questions and interact, we'll throw a party, we'll have a concert. It is going to be the place to be on President's Day weekend. Again, 94 tickets left, you need to be there. It is President's Day weekend, so you can stay full day Sunday and travel home on Monday. I hope to see you there. 94 seats left. If you miss out, I don't know what to do, um, but you're going you're gonna to want to be at this event. So folks, take care of yourself. Have an amazing day. Again, one more time, I apologize for the technical difficulties on the first one that I had to dump three minutes in, but you do what you do and you just roll with the punches. That's what live broadcasting is all about. Take care. Bye-bye.